Okay. Thank you all for coming. It's good to see all your smiling faces today. Um, we're going to just start right into it. Sing 304, all three verses. 304 in the blue book, all three verses. We're going to skip the chorus on the second verse. We got like 10 songs, and then we're going to have an intermission. Um, then we're going to have uh, some more songs. So that's how it works. Sounded great. Next number is 204. One, two, four, and five. By the way, I forgot to do this. Welcome to Sovereign Grace. So, <laughs> too late now. Well, that was a good intro, I think. So, now you're all here. Good.
So our next number is Psalter 120, verses 1, 3, and 4. Sing number 298, all three stanzas. Now we're going to sing number 14. This is complicated. All four verses, skip the chorus on verses 2 and 3. We can sit down.
Our next number is 190, all three stanzas. sing number 128 verses 1, 2, and 5. Which one? 28. Apparently I had that wrong. Number 28 verses 1, 2, and 5.
next number is Psalter 51, all four stanzas. We're going to sing number 115, all three stanzas, and we should stand up again. Next song is Psalter 179, stanzas 1, 2, 4, and 5.
going to switch over to the Red Book, and we're going to sing number 682, all three stanzas. We've got this song and one more, and then we're going to break for a short intermission. Red Books, number 553. Sing all four stanzas, a cappella on the second verse, and we'll skip the chorus on verse 2.
right, actually, if I can get you all to stand still for a second, I'm going to get a picture here for posterity. Smile, please. Yes. You all look so beautiful. Okay, we're good. That was like 30 pictures. So we can go back over, get some water. You know, I think there's more to eat too if you want. So go for it. All right, we're going to get started again. Um, we're going to have... All right, Seth has a quick announcement, and then... And then. And then, okay. So my announcement is that this, this summer I'm going to try to put together a choir of like young adults, such as yourselves, who are all here singing, so you're already halfway there. You just have to come on Thursday nights to... Kelvin College, the Fine Arts Center, in room 255, and it's at 7. So, I hope a lot of you can make it. It's this Thursday is the first time. But if you can't make it this Thursday, come next Thursday. Or the next one. We'll still take you. Okay, so there's that. Hope you can, a lot of you can come. Thank you. Yeah, and just to add to that, Seth is like professional. He's got the degree in everything, so... He would be really good. If you want to learn some more singing stuff, that would be a good opportunity for that. All right. So now we've asked uh, Pastor Dick, my dad, to say a couple of things. Uh, he'll keep it brief, he promised. And then we'll sing a few more numbers. We need that. You can pin it okay. on or whatever. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Uh, for those of you who were at the service tonight, this will be a, uh, a review. No, it won't. It will be an emphasis on something I could only gloss over in my sermon, and that was the phrase in Psalm 30, Thou hast turned my morning, or you have turned for me my morning into dancing. I have three points I want to make, and I want to make a personal um, uh, comment here at this point. My son and, and the AV crew would... Anyway, I was uh, not always Christian and it's a good thing I am now because I could easily get, you know, to know. Uh, See, this is part of the act. So, but I was converted by the grace of God um, in my college years, and before that I was lost, and after that I was found, obviously. And so I have a heart for young people, young adults like yourself, and uh, to see also that you who have been raised in the faith don't spurn it, don't compromise it, and that you would be. Uh, wonderfully happy and holy at the same time. We've led various campus groups, secular here, Grand Valley, Calvin, other places, uh, simply because I just love you guys and I love where you're at and see that as great opportunity and not just a great time of conflict and emotion and who am I going to get married and, and you know when and all that stuff. Um, but there's two things I really think. If you get it straight, if, if I'll get it straight with you, uh, you're going to go a long way up and, and uh, th on the right track. And, and it's the thing about being sad, and it's the thing about being happy. And I think that's what this text is addressing here when the psalmist praises God for turning his mourning, his sadness, into dancing, of all things. Uh, into this great exhilaration called the happiness of the child of God. So, I'm, I've entitled a speech here, which I have to keep very short, or the AV crew cuts me down. Um, morning into swing dancing. That's what I want to title this thing. And you might go know where I'm going, but there's three things you got to know. This is it, just three things, and then maybe four. Um, Define your terms. Define your terms by the word of God. When you're considering things like 
what's sadness, what's happiness? What's the proper form of sadness? What's the proper form of happiness? Is it dancing? What kind of that? Define your terms. Because there are definitions, and they're right in this wonderful word. This word of wisdom for everything. It tells you even how to be sad right. You know, we don't even get that right. And that tells you how to be happy correctly and for your benefit and the benefit of everybody about you. Well, the mourning of this text is not just over circumstances. It's David's mourning for his sin. And then God, uh, A.V. crew over there, what, what's the one? God was chastising David for his sin of, and I believe it was numbering the people. He got proud and cocky, too self-assured, and so God had to teach him something and teach all of Israel something through their king's repentance. So his sadness at being led unto death and plagues upon the people and so on turned into a good thing because he was sad. Biblically now, he was sorry for his sin. And then by the grace of God, it led into happiness. And happiness, he says, was such a thing that it was like I was on air and I was dancing. And nobody knows what the kind of dancing was uh, for David, but for David, it was a dancing unto the Lord, a praise to God, a way to express how happy he was with the salvation of God. So I want to suggest to you, young adults, remember to define your terms in light of the Bible. Now, how, what you should be said over, and not said over much, meaning to the point of despair, but with a godly sorrow that leads to repentance. And then when you get happy, finally, if ever that's going to happen before you're 25 and before you're married and before you have three cars, um, then make it biblical happiness. Because it's defined right there. God says so in his word. What is being happy? And again, I, I can't go on all this. I'm, I'm um, cut for time. But then I want to point out to you that the second thing that you need to learn with regard to these things you come across and all of the challenges is to delight in what God delights in. But use your seven senses. And if you're going to be delighting in things like getting your morning into dancing, make sure you use all seven of your senses. And you're saying, oh, Reverend Dick, you're getting old. You're losing it. We don't have seven senses. Well, yeah, you do. You have five senses. You know what they are. That's one. And all of the hearing and everything. But then you got common sense, which nobody seems to use. <laughs> so I'd forget that. But then you got faith perception. And that's the key. So you define your terms by the word of God. What's sadness? What's happiness? What's fulfillment? All of these things. And don't leave that. And then when you're thinking about delighting, because you're born to delight in something, make sure it's that you're ruled by God who works in you to be a sensible sort of people with five senses on the earth, but don't just stick with that or you're sensual. And being sensual is just going for what you see and you smell and putting on the perfume and opening up the cleavage. All right. Use common sense, but even go beyond that. Be believing. Be believing. And then you're arriving at something. And you're arriving at something that's God praising and that, that sets you apart as young people who are in Christ. You're arriving at a place where very few people get, and that's that they're free. Because they're delighting in God according to faith and according to the word of God, you're free to be yourself, to know who you are in Christ, to be happy in the Lord serving him. And that's the dance. That's the dance I want to suggest to you to commend to your attention that's right in the Bible. Yes, you can be happy before this or before that, before your ship comes in, right now. 
And you can have a godly sorrow that would lead to happiness and not a pitiful, um, doubting sort of thing. But it's all about Jesus. Define your terms. Make sure that Bible's informing you. And then approach things, senses wide open, common sense if you have it, and then believing perception, very, very important. You see, us older folks are trying to warn you about something. And it's about the other dances of the world, like the dance with death. You ever heard of that one? If you're ever going to dance unbiblically, which means not according to the word of God, and just using your five senses, or maybe three, you're going to be in trouble. And maybe you've been that way already. And I'm not talking about just dancing a swing dance or dancing disco. You ever hear that? <laughs> Aging myself. Uh, but dancing really with the world, fraternizing with the world, associating with its gaiety and so on. You know, the Roman punishment for certain criminals was called the dance with death. You know what they do to certain criminals? They would tie and latch a person with his arms around a corpse, a rotting corpse. And that prisoner, that would be his punishment. The prisoner would start to wriggle out and the maggots would start to crawl over to his body. And there would be this communication of death to the one imprisoned and enshackled by the corpse. And slowly, the death would go from the corpse to the living person, and he'd die a miserable death, dancing to get free from that which he thought, or from, yeah, which was the punishment. That's what happens when you link arms with the world and you swing dance till the night is young. That's what happens every time you go toward that place with the Bible not informing you and you're not being sensible with the seven senses God has given you. All right, the final point is this. Then, by all means, dance. Once you've got the definitions right, once you've got the delighting in God, in Christ right, by the senses, and you can dance your heart's content. And then life is more than just Fred Astaire. Ever hear him? Or whatever. It is you, as a child of God, being whom God made you to be. Whether you're an artist, baker, butcher, candlestick maker, homemaker, carpenter, whatever you guys are going to be. All right? Doesn't matter. Just be those whose mourning is turned into dancing and you can testify of the grace of God in Jesus. Be that. Don't be shackled by legalism. Don't be set free by what you think is good, but it's the counsel of the ungodly. Don't do that. I'm warning you, your parents have done that a thousand times, your pastors do that. Uh, you need to warn yourselves. And that's what I'd like to say about this dancing. It's with people that you don't choose. What's that? And what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, normally dan you dance with someone you like. I dare you, I challenge you to dance with people you don't like. And here's, here's what I mean. You dance with people whom God says you to dance with. They're called church members. Church members are ornery. Anybody from Sovereign Grace here? But I'm one of them, okay? And you don't choose me. I don't choose you. God chooses us to be together. Look at you tonight. What brought you here? I hope it's Christ. I trust it is. But here you are. You're put next to each other. Then you go to your churches. And there's people you don't know. But God knows them. Dance with people you don't like. Until, until that great day when you find someone you do like. And she's going to be your mate or he's going to be your mate. Ah, then you dance all the way to the altar, and all the way into marriage. So dance, and God bless you with godly sorrow, and then godly joy, mourning, turned into dancing. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. <clears throat> We're going to get back to the singing, though. I don't know. Maybe we should do some dancing, too. Back in the red book, number 859, all four verses. And I'd like to have the, the woman on verse 2 and the guys on verse 3. Excluding each other, so, I mean. So woman on 2, guys on 3, not both on 2 and 3. Seven seventy, red book still, all the verses. Let's stand.
to the blue book. Psalter 454, near, still near, all four stanzas. Standing up, yeah. Next number will be 451, all four stanzas, and stay standing for this one yet. We'll sit down soon.
next number is 95. Psalter 95 stands as 1, 3, and 4. And we can sit down, everyone except Jesse, that is. <laughs> you can sit down. song is Psalter 237, all two verses. going to sing number 38, all five stanzas.
right now Psalter 112, stanzas 1, 2, and 4. Sing Psalter 436, and we're going to stand.
All right, now we'll sing number 445, all four stands. Psalter is 469, all three stanzas.
All right, so we have two more songs. I think we can stay standing for the last two. Got strong legs. <laughs> Number 470, Abide With Me, all five. sing 224 and then after that we'll sing glory be to the father 491 so this will go right into that i won't come up here again one two three. Oh, one, two, three, and four 224 
All right, thank you all for coming. It's been a great delight singing God's praises together. And now let's go forth into this week and really live like we're Christians, okay? We, we come to Sunday a lot and we do the right things and we, we're here. This is wonderful. But during the week, we sometimes get lost, lose track of what we're doing. And so this week, let's focus and remember who we are. Stand out, stand strong. Be men and women of God. Um, other thing, I'd like to have everybody cleared out here by 10.30, but feel free to socialize for a while, talk and whatever. But just if you can be gone by 10.30 so we can have some time to clean up. We, we, love, we love you. But it's, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thanks to Kaylee for playing the piano.